Part 3. Matt and Moy. We left it on the last time. Matt, fallen in love with one of my bar girls, been backwards and forwards to Thailand from the UK. Last time he came over, they went to the village and got married. Visa application to take Moy back to the UK failed. Moy with a lost face going back to the village. She came back to the bar, back to work. Didn't tell him, she was speaking to him on internet on the phone and telling him she was in the village. This carried on for six months and finally she gets the message that he can't um, figure a way out of getting her to the UK so he's coming to live in Thailand. But he had no money, he's a lorry driver. He's coming to live in Thailand. How is that possible? Well, Matt's fallen in love. He's hooked with Thailand. He's hooked with the scene, the weather, the food, the culture, and this beautiful woman who's now his wife. He's, what, 41 now? She's 31. She's 10 years younger than him. All good. What does Matt do? Silly boy. Matt's gone to the bank. Banks. He's taken a large loan out, unsecured because he's got nothing to secure it against. So I'm guessing about £20,000 is the limit. For whatever reason he's told them to buy something, a car or whatever, he's borrowed £20,000 from the bank. And he had credit cards. He's worked his credit cards somehow and maybe got more. And got a load of credit cards with maybe 10, just over £10,000 available on them. His intention is to leave the UK and not repay all that. Now, there's lots of words for that, isn't it? What he's doing, what he did. Anyway, that's what he just, he just said, that's it. He books a plane, comes, Moy leaves the bar up to Bangkok, meets him. They go into Bangkok, a hotel, and then he explains to Moy that he's raised a bit of money and he's going to raise some more with another idea and he's going to stay and they'll get their own place um, in Thailand. Moy's over the moon, he's turned back up, okay, now he's got money. Now, just before this happened, a couple of weeks before he turned back up, the only time in Thailand that I have ever seen anyone win some money on the Thai lottery. Uh, yes, that is one of the things that you can gamble on in Thailand. Similar to around the world, numbers, you pay for a ticket. I've never seen anyone win on the Thai lottery Apart from one occasion, and this is a couple of weeks before Matt turned up, Moy won the equivalent of about ten thousand dollars, eight thousand pound, on the lottery. Never seen anyone else win, and she won. Um, so she sat pretty with, let's say, ten thousand dollars in her bank. So, gone to meet him in the airport, hotel, he's explained everything. What's he doing? The next morning, with Moy's help, he goes to gold shops in Bangkok, Chinatown, Yawarad. These gold shops, big red signs, gold writing, big windows, and you can see loads of gold lying around or hanging in the, the cases up behind. It's just a sea of gold. I've done a video on gold. Go watch it. And in Thailand, you can buy gold from the shop. And if you resell it, you don't lose too much. Just a few percent. Depends on the gold price. Sometimes the gold price goes up and you can make money. Matt's plan. He's got 
about five, six credit cards. He's gone into a shop, he's bought gold with his credit card to the limit. Put the gold in his pocket, in her handbag, whatever. He's gone round different shops with all his five or six cards and he's maxed, taken them to the maximum limit, buying gold. Those cards now are full. He owes money on each card to the limit. But he's no intention of going back to the UK in his head. Again, there's a word for that. So they've bought all this gold and they head off back to the hotel. The idea is, is to sell it and turn it into cash. And fine. Next day, different part of Bangkok in the centre, Siam Square somewhere, he's going around the gold shops and they're selling it. And the price has pretty much stayed the same. So he loses a little bit, but he sells all the lots of different shops and gets cash. And he raises about it's about £10,000 more. He's now sat with £30,000. How did he get that money from the UK over to Thailand, that 20000 loan he had? Because you're only allowed to bring 10000 You must declare it. He didn't. He put it all in his pocket and walked and flew over with it. Very lucky he didn't get caught. Twenty, And now, so he's got thirty grand cash. He's come over on uh, a tourist visa. He still can't get a marriage visa because he's only married in the village. It doesn't count. Um, so he can't get a bank account with a tourist visa, I believe. Well, back then, not. Moy says to her that she'll open a bank account. She'll open it in her name. He can put the money in the bank. She'll give him the ATM card and the book so it's all safe. Um, and they do that, they go and do it, put all in the bank. He gets an ATM card there and then when you open a toy bank, the card and the number book. So he's sat with 30K, tourist visa. He's married, but not in the government's eyes yet. He sold everything in the UK and just up, up and went. But he's left now behind a lot of debt. Oh dear, silly boy, silly boy. He just loved Thailand so much and his new wife. So what's the next step? What is his plans? He talks to Moy, they have a couple of days in Bangkok. He should have just gone and rented somewhere. By the coast somewhere, just small room, rented it, figured out, get married properly and get a proper visa. Done it that way and then maybe start some sort of a little business for Moy, but no. Moy says to him the best way is to buy a little bit of land in her village, build a small house so they've got somewhere and then figure out a way of making some money um, from there. Matt, don't do it. He does. They go to the village. Okay, he did find a small piece of land near the family home and they got local builders to make it but he's still spent um, just over £10,000 to get a little weeny one bedroom house, Thai style, a little bit of land. But of course it's all in Moy's name. You know, the land, foreigner can't own, so in her name. But she does get him a yellow book, Tabai, whatever it's called, Tabai, the yellow book, which is the house is an address registered to him, um, but again he only had a tourist visa so I don't know how she did it, but somehow she got a yellow book for him, but he still couldn't get the one year visa or anything else because they're not registered, the marriage. He's got 20 grand left in the bank, they've got a house, then they spend another 5,000 doing it up, buying the accessories, bits. Then another 5,000 on furniture and a couple of motorcycles. He's left with 10 grand. He's got a house and all these bits. No future. He still can't get a visa. He's got no chance of getting a visa now to get her back to the UK. He's gonna to have to stay in Thailand. Over the following six months, 
they just tinker around the village and dabble in a couple of little businesses. Moy's not really a business person. Um, the money just dwindles away down to about six grand. Things are looking dire. Um, he's realizing that now, okay, he's got the house. He can't earn money in Thailand. He hasn't got teaching qualifications. He's got no, he drives a lorry in the UK. He's got to figure something out. He's got no friends. He says to Moy, could we maybe get a bar or something? Is there a way of doing it? Moy sort of maybe, maybe, don't know how much money. We need to go and look and ask. Uh, let's go back to my old bar and maybe Simon can help you. And Yeah, they turn up at my bar, tell me the whole story, what they've done and what Matt's done. So he sat in front of me in my bar, I'm always chatting away to the girls, and he's, I've got five grand left. What can I do? There's nothing. You can't get a bar in those days for five grand. You couldn't even, even if someone gave you the bar and then just rented it to you, you couldn't set it up. It was no way. It wasn't enough money to set anything up. My advice to him was go back to the UK and sort your debt out um, and then come back. Couldn't give him any advice about doing anything else. Disheartened, he knew that was the way to go. Um, they left the bar. He decided to go back to the village, not take my advice. Um, and they went back to the village again, up and down, 10 hours, 10 hours. A few months, two, three months, money was gone. He was maybe down to his last thousand. But remember, Moy had that winnings from the lottery. If she'd have put that with his money, maybe they could have got a little bar or something. But she didn't tell him. Down to his last thousand pound. Moy turned around to him and said, there's nothing we can do, you've got to go home. And he knew, that's it, he's got to go. And that's what he did, back to the UK, face all the problems. That was the last I ever heard of Matt. Uh, he was ringing Moy and contacting her by email for maybe six months and then everything stopped, nothing at all. He'd obviously struggling to get money together and raise anything. And it just, the, the contact stopped and we couldn't get hold of him and we never heard any more from him. He just disappeared. If you're watching this, Matt, what happened? Moy then came back to the bar and she still had that lottery money in the bank. She now had a house, she now had land, a couple of motorcycles. Thank you very much. She didn't lose too much face in the village because she got a house. And that is it guys. It's an open-ended story because Matt has never come back, got in touch. Years have gone by now. Um, <sighs> the moral of this story, no matter how much you fall in love with Thailand or a Thai lady, lady boy, guy, unless you have got enough finances and a plan in place to either move, get a business together or an income of some description teaching. We've got enough money to live off with some form of income from property or retirement, pension, whatever. Don't go to Thailand to settle down. You have to have the finances in place. So many guys do it and don't start buying land and houses for girlfriends, boyfriends, whatever you find and fall in love with. Um, 
until everything's further down the line, years down the line. Rent, rent an apartment, a condo, a room. Get to know your new wife, husband, partner to be. So many of these stories I've heard and seen similar to this one. Not so much with Matt disappearing at the end, but where the guys have, uh, the girls just said goodbye. So there we go, that was Matt and Moy. That was the final episode, so not too bad. I won't tell you what's coming up. I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.